everyone, in today's video I want to share with you my setup for the Sony a7 IV. So I'm going to take you through all my camera settings, how I have all my buttons set up as custom shortcuts, what my custom shortcut menu is, what my favorite focus settings are, and just pretty much everything that I do with this camera for photography. Starting off with the basics, this is my shutter button that I use to take photos. I use the front dial as my shutter speed control. This is the record button I use for video. C2 I've got set to a focus area shortcut to easily be able to scroll through my wide zone, center fix, flexible spot controls. This button here I use as an aperture control. Usually with the Sony lenses I use, it already has an aperture ring on it, so I'll only use this if I'm using a lens that doesn't have an aperture ring on it. And I'm so excited that Sony decided to remove the exposure compensation dial. You can still use it for that reason, but it is now an infinity dial and you can shortcut it to whatever you want. So I was trying to decide whether I should use it as an ISO shortcut or a white balance shortcut, and I ended up going with a white balance shortcut. I use it a little bit for photo, but I feel like that mostly comes in handy when I'm doing video. And you can also press the top button here to lock it off so you don't move it by accident. Moving on now to the back of the camera, my C3 button is a shortcut between all the focus modes. My C1 button rotates between animal, bird, and human IAF. My AF on button is a focus magnifier shortcut. So I normally use this when I'm in manual focus for both photo and video. So I just like to zoom in and make sure what I want is tack sharp. My AEL button here is a shortcut for IAF, which will override if I've got a focus point in my frame. And again, we'll get into all the IAF and focus settings as a whole a little bit later on in this video. Next, I've got the joystick which I use to move my focus point around. Next I have my dial, which is my ISO shortcut. I absolutely love having my ISO on this dial. It's super handy. Display is pretty standard. It just rotates through all the different displays. I personally like shooting with the cleanest screen of all of them, which is this one. If we press to the left, I've got a shortcut for silent mode on and off. And if we go to the right, I've got another shortcut for white balance. And the reason I have two in this camera is because all my Sony cameras have this right button set as a white balance shortcut. So to keep things consistent, I thought I'd have this set the same way as well. And then if we press down, I've got my right and left eye select. And finally, I've got the C4 button, which is the trash can button, which I use to switch between the LCD and the viewfinder. I don't like it when it's automatic because I accidentally shut off the LCD sometimes while I'm using it or someone will go and point at something on the back of the camera, which will make the image disappear. So I've got that set as a shortcut rather than having it be automatic. So next up, we have the function menu where I've got all my favorite shortcuts of things that I use all the time while I'm taking photos. So the first thing I have in there is drive mode. So when I'm doing portrait photography, I am always in single shooting. And also when I'm doing landscape photography, for pretty much everything else, I switch it to continuous shooting. The next shortcut I have is focus mode where I can switch from single shot and continuous autofocus to manual focus. I'm gonna leave it in continuous because that's what I always have it set to. And the next one I have is the focus area. So with a wide focus area, this is what I use when I want to only rely on IAF to get focus for me. And I've got Dan who's sitting in as our model to show you exactly how these work. So if I set the focus area to wide, that pretty much means that you have no control over where the focus point is. The camera is pretty much just choosing for you where the focus is and it's going to prioritize faces because I do have IAF on. So as you can see, it's focusing on Dan. I normally like to shoot with a small flexible focus point and this is because I like choosing where the focus point is going to be. So I do this a lot when I'm shooting thumbnails. I'm gonna put the focus point over the Yashica over here. So I do this when I'm shooting thumbnails and also when I'm shooting weddings because I'm typically shooting a wide variety of subjects from objects to people to like buildings and stuff. So this really comes in handy. So with the focus point over the Yashica, the focus point takes priority for where the camera is focusing. And as you can see, it does register that Dan's face is there in the background, but it's not going to focus on it. So I have the AEL button here set up as a shortcut for IAF. So if I'm focusing on the Yashica, but all of a sudden, I want the focus to be on the person in the background. I'm gonna hold down AEL. 
And as you can see, it's overriding that small flexible focus point and making IAF become the priority focus. Back to the function menu, the next shortcut I have is the variable shutter shortcut, which I'm very excited is in the A74 because this is a feature that we first saw in the A1. So basically when you're shooting for me weddings where I'm at venues that have lots of different lights, you can come across some rolling shutter. So you can use the variable shutter just to adjust your shutter speed to try and minimize as much rolling shutter as possible. And you can see how weird the shutter speed looks when you've got this turned on. It's just got a very fine number. The next shortcut we have is AF tracking sensitivity and this is probably the most important setting when it comes to autofocus on Sony cameras. So when I'm testing a lens for a review, I set my tracking sensitivity to 5 which is responsive. This is to test how fast a lens can perform when focusing at different distances. So you should set your tracking sensitivity to responsive if you're shooting a fast moving subject or you're switching between subjects quickly. So for me, for example, that would come in really handy when I'm capturing mingling shots at a wedding or people dancing on the dance floor. Locked on, on the other hand, does the opposite of responsive where the autofocus is really sticky on the subject that you're photographing. So I love using this when I'm at a wedding ceremony for example, and I'm shooting the bride and groom from down the aisle. So if someone just so happens to walk through my shot, the autofocus won't switch to that random person that got in my shot. It will just stay on the couple. So that is extremely handy for those situations where little things like that can just happen out of nowhere and cause you to miss the shot. Next is if I'm using manual focus or a vintage lens, I can input what focal length that lens is for IBIS. I also have a flash mode shortcut which goes between these settings and also a live view display shortcut as well. And this is so handy for two reasons. The first one is when I'm shooting in a studio and the second one is again when I'm shooting a wedding reception with a flash on my camera. The next option I have is again the right and left eye select but I have it in the function menu because if I don't want to specifically choose between each eye, I do just set it on auto sometimes as well. I also have steady shot where I can turn it on and off so when I'm doing astrophotography for example or taking photos on a tripod. So it's actually quite a few days later and I'm wearing the same thing so that it's not super jarring in the video if I get changed but during the last clip we were recording my Atmos Ninja just decided to die and it would not turn back on and that thing is super important for my workflow I use it for almost all my videos so I ordered a replacement I got it express shipped but there's a lot of shipping delays in Sydney so it took a few days to get here and here we are now to complete the video. It was a bit of an adventure to get here. So let's continue where we left off. The next shortcut I have in my function menu is image quality settings. And the main reason I have this here is because of YouTube. So sometimes I need a raw and JPEG photo straight out of the camera for when I'm doing reviews or comparisons. But when I'm shooting for clients, I always shoot with the raw file format. And in raw file type, I always shoot with uncompressed raw because it is faster when you're editing on a computer later. And if we go down into record media settings, I also have record media for both photo and video to simultaneously record to both card slots. So I have an instant backup of everything that I'm shooting. By the way, speaking of memory cards, these are the cards that I use. I use Prograde SDXC V60 cards, Prograde SDXC V90 cards, and also Prograde CF Express Type A cards. Last but not least, in the function menu, I have aspect ratio. And again, this is another YouTube shortcut. So the majority of my photos, I always shoot in three by two, but when when I'm shooting thumbnails, I like to change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 so I can compose my thumbnails properly. If you've never changed the aspect ratio before, if you shoot in RAW, you can always convert it back to the original when you're editing on your computer so it doesn't actually crop out the top and bottom of your images or whatever ratio you've chosen. You still have your original 3 by 2 in the RAW file. I have three more external shortcuts set up and these are all when you're in playback when you're reviewing your images. So the first one is my C1 button and this is for focus frame display on and off and this will display where the focus point was when you took the photo. And finally, the last thing I have set up is FTP, where the photos are sent from my camera automatically to my NAS. And this is really handy when I'm just taking a few photos at home, maybe some thumbnails or product photos. So again, when I'm in playback, my shortcut, the first one is the record button, which will send the entire card to the NAS. 
and I'm just gonna not do that right now. And then my second shortcut is the C2 button, which will only send that one photo that I'm looking at to the NAS. Since there's so many customization options on the a7 IV, there's not actually a lot to show you left in the menu, but I will go through a couple of the things that are just set up permanently for me. So let's head into the menu under image quality. I have my color space set to sRGB and this is the same color space that I use for my entire workflow. Next under file and file folder settings, I always like to change the name of my files in every camera that I use and because I usually have two of the same camera body, I try to make those file names different. So my other a7 IV is a7f and this one's a7g. Next under the shutter menu, I use a mechanical shutter and I have e front curtain shutter set to off. Release without lens is enabled for when I use vintage glass and release without card is disabled. Next we have metering mode and I usually leave my metering mode on center and also something if you're not sure which one to pick, you can hover over each of these and press the trash button which will give you more information about how that function works. And I have face priority in multi metering set to on and my spot metering point is linked to my focus point. I'm going to head down all the way to the bottom of the yellow menu under setup option and anti-dust function. And here we have a feature that I know a lot of people were excited for, which is the shutter when power off. Uh, when the shutter closes, when you uh, turn off your camera so you can change your lens and protect the sensor. I actually have it set to off because I find that shutters are more fragile and I personally find it very easy to clean a camera sensor. So I prefer cleaning the sensor rather than the shutter, which is why I've got the setting turned off. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is under the color slash tone menu, which I have the D range optimizer set to off. Creative look is set to standard and my picture profile is always off when I'm doing photography. And that is it. That is how I have my Sony a7 IV set up. Feel free to copy my setup if you like. Otherwise, I hope this video has given you some ideas on how you can set up your own camera. If you have any questions about anything, let me know down in the comments below. And if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to watch the video setup of the a7 IV as well because it is a bit different to the photography setup. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.